check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hello and welcome to the Sysadmin Tutorials YouTube channel. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and enjoyed the time celebrating with family and friends. I want to bring you this quick video today because if you are not already aware, there's a nasty vulnerability around in which a hacker could allow for remote code execution and gain full control of the target system, and that is the Apache Log4j vulnerability. VMware has been identified as using Apache Log4j in their products. A list of products can be found on their advisor page by heading to myvmware.com and clicking on the advisory reference link, which is this link just up here on the top right hand corner. You can see in this table that there are a number of products affected, some with workarounds and some with patches. Today we're going to concentrate on performing the workaround for VMware vCenter server. And we're going to be doing that by using the supplied script. So if we click on the KB article here for workarounds for VMware vCenter server, and we scroll down just a little bit, we have two files here to download, and the file that we want to download is VC log4j mitigator. So I'll click on that, and I'll click save. Now I'm going to head on over to my vCenter server, which is the base vCenter server. And within here, I'll log in as administrator. And when I say that this is my base vCenter server, so this is vm vcenter.vmlab.local. And within this virtualization environment, I do have nested environments. So the one that we're going to be looking at today, if we scroll down here, is the vCloud Director Lab. So here we have our vCloud 9 vCenter. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a snapshot. So I'll just right click on that, go to snapshots, take snapshot, untick include virtual machines memory. And within here, we're just going to type in before log4j script and click create. Now that's going to give us a rollback just in case anything goes wrong with the script. But to run the script, what we need to do is we need to SSH into the vCloud9 vCenter server. And I'm going to establish a connection to the IP address. Press yes. And we'll log in with root. And once we're logged in, we can type shell. Now I'm just going to change directory into temp. And we're going to go to the Python script. And what I'm going to do, instead of copying the file to the vCenter server with WinSCP, I'm just going to copy the contents and create a new file within the SSH window. So to do that, I'm going to edit the file. And then I'm going to select all and press Control C to copy the contents. Now I'll minimize that and we'll go back to our SSH window. And within here, we're going to use VI to create the file. So VI space, and then we'll name it the same. So VC underscore log4j underscore mitigator dot py. And we're going to press I to insert. And then we're just going to paste the contents of the file in here. And once we've pasted the contents, we can press escape and that'll exit out of insert mode. And then we can go colon WQ exclamation mark. So that's right, quit, and force. Now, if we check back on the workaround notes from VMware, now what we need to do to execute the script is type in Python space and then the file name. So we'll return back to the party window and we'll type in Python and then VC tab and we'll press enter. Now, when we press enter, it's going to stop the vCenter services. So just be aware of that. And we'll press yes to continue. And we can see here that it's found vulnerable files. And the mitigation is now finished, so it's going to start the services again. Okay, and the script has finished running. Now, if we have a look back on the article here, you can see that to verify that no more vulnerable files exist, execute the script again with the dry run flag. So that's exactly what it said here in the putty window. Run this script again with the dash dash dry run. So let's do that now. And just to make sure that no other files or vulnerable files are found. And there we have it, no vulnerable files found. So what we need to do is just make sure that you check back on the advisory page, probably each day, 
for the latest updates. So just in case that a patch is released for vCenter server. And that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. This was a quick but important video to keep your environment safe. Um, take care out there and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.